What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions of Dishonored 2, the next review I have slated. Because despite its relatively recent release all the way back in 2016, at least compared to a lot of stuff that I play, this is not a title I have played before. But I did recently go through Dishonored just last year, and I enjoyed it quite a bit, so naturally Dishonored 2 was, of course, on the list of games that I wanted to get to, and... Overall, I would say I'm enjoying it as a lot of the gameplay elements from the first game are expanded upon, giving you more options, ways to approach things. Non-lethal is definitely more satisfying, and I'm doing a high chaos run, but even just what little I've played around with so far has been fun. But where the game is losing me a little bit is actually down to the story, because whereas Dishonored was a little more of a faceless assassin outside of just, you know, the fact that you're supposed to be Corvo, the rest was up to you. Here, though, Corvo is voice he has a face, and that kind of makes sense with the story they wanted to tell revolving around his daughter Emily, also from the first game, having grown up and become the Empress. But naturally, in order to kick things off, things go sideways almost immediately, with a coup attempt happening featuring Delilah from the DLCs of Dishonored, using her magic and the powers of the Outsider to take her spot on the throne, as it apparently turns out that she is in fact Emily's aunt, which I wasn't quite expecting. But one of the cooler things this game does, though, is right away gives you a choice between playing Corvo and Emily, who have a difference in the powers they can obtain, which is obviously going to matter for certain playthroughs, and then depending on which one you play, you can get unique endings for both low chaos and high chaos approaches to things. And while I enjoy the setup of that well enough, the issue, for me at least, being about two-thirds of the way through my first playthrough, is that I've yet to really see anything that has got me hooked into this story compared to Dishonored 1, which had this really strong atmosphere and everything, against the backdrop of the Rat Plague even. But here in Dishonored 2, we're taken to a southern city known as Karnica, which while certainly a little more vibrant and bringing new threats via things like blood flies, just doesn't quite have the same tone, even if the world does certainly look a little bit better. Now that said, that could change. I have yet to do a low chaos playthrough and compare all the differences between high and low. And of course, seeing the last third of the story play out might certainly change my opinions here. But first impressions wise, that's kind of where I'm at. It's good, but it's not comparable, I think, to the first game in a lot of ways. Now, what is much better, so far for me at least, in Dishonored 2 is the gameplay. Dishonored's gameplay was already very smooth, but having a game that manages to feel even smoother in that regard while also expanding your arsenal to let you do all sorts of other things via gadgets and powers has been a lot of fun. Now, I'm actually a especially interested to get around to playing Emily, because I'm doing Corvo and High Chaos first, who's going through just being an absolute murder hobo, but I'm still gonna have like three more runs and some saves coming to do to see everything. But the nice thing about the High Chaos approach of murdering everyone you see is that it feels familiar enough to Dishonored's gameplay while expanding things here and there to make some fresh approaches at the very least, which I think goes hand in hand with the different, I would say, level design, not necessarily better, as Dishonored 1 had a lot of open areas, whereas Dishonored 2 feels a little more like it's several corridors that wind in and around each other. And on one hand, with all of the improvements since the first game, they've packed those corridors with much more stuff and a lot more chances to use your abilities. At least moment to moment, because it is a little more cramped, it's kind of hard to get around without directly confronting enemies so it comes up more, outside of just, you know, using Blink to traverse which I think will make the stealth no-kill run especially interesting. While that certainly applies to regular enemies that you'll run into, I have found that the actual assassination targets, or just targets in general, I suppose, that the game sets you up for don't have quite the satisfying non-lethal options that the first game had either, which were in many ways, I would say, simply poetic justice for said target, whereas Dishonored 2 here, it seems mostly just like a general alternative. Though it's my understanding, choices that you make with individual characters have a lot more bearing on the ending in this particular title than just the chaos like it was in the previous game, which I do think overall addresses one of my, I would say, main complaints having played the original, which is that they give you all these tools as an assassin but don't let you play around with them if you actually want the good ending. Whereas here, 
that seems to be addressed quite a bit. And while it will certainly change the tone of the ending, there are more endings overall, plus they're not necessarily just down to whether or not the assassin chose to be an assassin. But of course, I'll have to wait and see how all that feels for myself. But broadly speaking, to wrap this up for a first impressions video and not go on too long, I would say Dishonored 2 has been kind of a mixed bag coming from Dishonored 1. In many ways, I think the gameplay feels a lot better, but the story isn't exactly jiving with me, and I'm hoping some of the choices and things that happened in the last half and how things kind of come together to finish the story up, that it manages to at least put a bow on some of this. Now, in terms of the game's standalone expansion, Death of the Outsider, I'm probably going to rope that into the same video as this one, but obviously I'm not quite there yet for the sake of this video, but in the review I will certainly be covering it, as I don't feel like they'll be distinct enough to bother making separate videos for, and I think it'll take me a little bit to get to the review. On one hand, like Dishonored, this one is, I would say, short but replayable, as I know for a fact I'm coming up on the end of it, but it's going to take me probably three more full play playthroughs of the game, which will be much faster though, and then a bunch of saves coming to see some options, and then I gotta do Death of the Outsider. So it's hard to say exactly when that video will be coming, but estimates for both usually put that somewhere around the 60-ish hours mark, so I don't imagine it will take me a super long time, maybe a week or two. But in the meantime, certainly feel free to let me know down in the comments section below how you feel about Dishonored 2, how it compares to the first title, as I am looking forward to doing a little comparing and contrasting between the two myself when I finish this one up. But for the moment, that's going to do it for this video, so I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.